Hey, what is happening guys? Welcome back to another video and today we'll be comparing the Xiaomi Air 13 laptop, the 2016 and 2017 editions. Yes, we have both of them right here and I have tested a bunch of things, including games, synthetic benchmarks, and bench, battle life, temperatures in video, temperatures in gaming, and we're pretty much going to be talking about if it's worth getting the 2017 edition over the 2016 edition. And hopefully using the information that I've collected in the past few days will help you decide on what's better for you. And yes, we do have some pretty interesting results. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get started with some gaming benchmarks and move on and eventually Eventually, we're going to get to the conclusion and let you guys know what I think of these laptops. Because yes, again, once again, we have some pretty interesting results. And if you're wondering what the specs on these things are before we get started, here they are. Uh, the biggest difference are the GPU and CPU. Other than that, the looks of it from the outside are mostly identical except for the fingerprint scanner on the 2017 edition. And of course, on the inside, other than the CPU and GPU being different, we do have a much better and faster SSD storage built into it. And we'll be showing you guys the benchmarks in just a bit here. But yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started with some casual and competitive games such as Rocket League here. And we can see that the 2017 edition does pull ahead by 15 frames per second on average. And those 15 frames do make a big difference, especially in a game like this. Uh, anything below 60 FPS, you're obviously not going to have a very smooth experience. But overall, the 2017 edition does have a very, very playable experience, averaging at around 50 FPS, and both of these are running at 1080p with medium settings. But if you do want to get some playable frame rates on the 2016 edition, then I would recommend dropping it to 720p medium settings to keep things still looking nice while having some frame rates. Of course, you can drop it to absolute low settings and run it at 1080p or 720p, and you'll probably get over 60 FPS if you want to do that. Now moving on to CSGO, here's where things kind of get pretty interesting. We can see that the frame rates are pretty similar and there's not a big of a difference. We're getting 9 frames per second difference between the two on average. And that's probably in the margin of error. So I went ahead and retested this on a different map, standing in the exact same position, looking at the exact same part of the map. And I was getting the exact same frame rates. And that did get me pretty confused and I'm still trying to figure out what is going on here. And you're going to see that in some other games, but not a lot of them. But either way, you're still going to be getting a very solid experience on either laptop. Moving on to PUBG or Player Unknown's Battleground, and this is the only game in the selection of games here that you're not going to be able to get any playable frame rates. You might, but it's going to be really hard, and even at lowest settings at 720p, these things are still going to struggle. And that is of course because this game is simply not optimized. You probably know this if you play this game, and uh, even desktop computers that are powerful end up crashing and stuff because this game is just, you know, still in alpha, it's still in early access. That said, I was actually able to play this game at 25 FPS at 720p on the 2016 edition laptop and actually get to 5th place and I was taken down by the blue line in the end. Alright, and here's the game that you guys are probably waiting for, in GTA 5, of course, it has to be on the list. Um, yeah, on both laptops, it is very, very playable. There's about 11 frames per second difference between the two here, but one thing for sure is I did have a much smoother experience on the 2017 edition laptop, and I did notice it, it was much, much smoother, and the setting for these things, I was running at 1080p lowest settings, and the game still looked gorgeous, and very playable, very enjoyable indeed. And, uh, moving on to Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4 here or Super Street Fighter 4. I did run the built-in benchmark in this game, and here are the results that I got. So 179 and 138, and a difference of 41 FPS. And not a big difference because this game is going to be running at 60 FPS anyways, it's always locked. But yeah, the game is still very, very playable on medium settings, I believe. Next up, we have Overwatch, a very competitive and casual game depending on what kind of person you are. Again, uh, the 2017 edition does pull ahead by 11 frames per second, and the game is still very playable on both ends. 80% uh, scaling, I believe, and lowest settings at 1080p. And yeah, very playable experience, had fun playing it, it's all good. Now we move into Origin with Battlefield 1, and the frame rates we have here are pretty okay. Now, I did run the game at low settings with 1080p on both ends, and here are the frame rates. I don't remember what map it was, but these were both on a very large map, very open, and tons of players. The server was almost full, so you can see that it's kind of a worst case scenario. That said, you can still drop this game to 720p and improve your frame rates and get a much playable experience. On the 2016 edition laptop, you might be able to pull it off depending on what kind of settings you can put it at, but these are the numbers. You can always drop the settings more and get better frame rates, but if you want to play Battlefield 1, I totally recommend getting the 2017 edition laptop. It's got 2GB of VRAM and it's clocked at a higher clock speed, along with the faster SSD of course, and that you know, faster CPU. And finally, we get to Star Wars Battlefront 1. And as you guys probably know, this is one of the most gorgeous optimized games out there. You can run this game on almost any hardware, and the game will still look fantastic. And at the same time, you'll be getting some very nice frame rates. On average here, we have 22 frames per second more on the 2017 edition laptop. And it's much nicer on the 2017 because you're getting way over 60 FPS, or 69 FPS really, 
on average. But uh, the highs and lows are pretty good. And once again, you're gonna have a fantastic experience on either one, depending on what kind of settings you're gonna have the game set at. If you do wanna get 60 FPS on the 2016 edition laptop, you can drop the game to 720p at low settings and you'll be hitting around 63 frames on average, which is pretty good. Alright, and that's pretty much it for the games that I have tested so far. But if there's a game you want me to test out, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to include it in the next video. And now we get to some benchmarks. Uh, heavy benchmark, there's not a big of a difference. Once again, this is a synthetic benchmark. Uh, doesn't give the full story, but yeah, heavy benchmark, nothing much going on here. And moving on to the SSD speeds, uh, both of these do have Samsung SSDs, which is really nice and reliable. But that said, the 2017 edition laptop does have much better and faster read speeds. It's almost double, it's really good. And you'll see the difference when you boot up these laptops if you had them side by side. And pretty much launching anything on the 2017 edition laptop, it is much, much faster. That said, the 2016 edition laptop does have faster write speeds, which is pretty interesting, but that's not an issue since your computer is going to be mainly reading. And what I mean by reading is pretty much opening any file or launching games or launching programs are all going to be much faster. And on a typical day, that's where you're going to really appreciate that extra speed. But that said, either one is going to serve you very well. And finally, for the last synthetic benchmark, we have Cinebench. And uh, there's just some boring results. They're kind of similar, but that is to be expected since both of these do run very similar CPUs. And now we get to Battery Life, and I unfortunately got to do one test only so far. It's very time consuming with Battery Life tests, and that's because I have to drain these things in a very realistic manner. So for the test that I have done so far, what I've done is I had both of them running a 1080p H.264 encoded file, played on loop until the battery went out. And surprisingly, the 2016 edition Skylink one actually pulled ahead by an extra hour, which once again is pretty surprising. And um, trying to figure out why what's going on here, but even though the newer hardware actually is supposed to consume less power, but uh, we'll find out in the next video hopefully. That said, if you're planning to watch a movie on the battery at full brightness, this is how much battery life you're gonna have. You're gonna have four hours on the 2017 edition, and 5 hours on the 2016 edition. Of course, you could probably push this all the way to 8 hours if you wanted, drop the brightness to 50%, put it on power saving mode, and you'll probably be good to go. Both of these were done on max brightness with the high performance mode on, so there was no power saving whatsoever. They were both done on the dedicated graphics card, and that's the result we got. Then we have the awesome superposition benchmark, and here we can see there's a huge difference between the two. It's pretty insane. It's almost double in fact, and you can clearly see that it has much better frames when it comes to minimums, averages, and highs. Across the board, it is a much better laptop, and if you take a look at the GPU utilization, the 2017 edition doesn't struggle as much, and that is thanks to that 2GB of VRAM, as well as the faster clock speeds. Very impressive, and the superposition benchmark is pretty awesome as well. Which brings us to the temperatures, which is something that is very important since these are ultrabooks and they are not meant for gaming, they're not designed for gaming, and obviously you got some very powerful hardware in there. And of course, when you push hardware, it's gonna heat up. So on average, the temperatures on both of these did not surpass 80 degrees Celsius. They always throttled back down and managed to stay under that. One thing I did notice on the KB Lake, it seems to throttle around 70 Celsius. And that's when you see it drop down a bit and then go back to 70 Celsius, so on and so forth. On the other hand, with the Skylink, it seems to throttle around 80 degrees, which is pretty interesting. And that's probably when you want to start using throttle stop to uh, manage the throttling on this thing. And if you don't know what that is, in simple terms, it's basically a program that allows you to control your CPU's output. And if you're someone who's planning to get some work done on this thing, you can have a great experience as well. I have tested Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, and Lightroom, and the performance on all three of them are very similar. Except I did notice that the 2017 edition was a tiny bit faster, and that's of course thanks to the faster hardware as well as the super fast SSD storage. That has some very nice read speeds, which you're going to definitely appreciate, especially when editing video. Now, encoding speeds for both of them on Adobe Premiere for 60fps, H.264, 1080p, were exactly the same. I have tested on both of them and it seems to be the exact same. So when it comes to encoding on Adobe Premiere CC, you're going to be getting some very similar results. And of course, with all this power, you're going to be able to do word processing very efficiently. And of course, including PDFs and whatnot, everything is going to run perfectly fine. But what's important when it comes to word processing is of course having a very reliable and easy to use keyboard. And this keyboard here, I can gladly say, it reminds me much of the good old ThinkPad. I was able to get the hang of it within minutes and I was able to type on this thing very efficiently, which is pretty awesome. And thankfully, the touchpad here is also fantastic as well. It's very responsive and it doesn't seem to have any problems and yeah I had a great experience with the built-in inputs on this thing usually laptops have a terrible touchpad but thankfully this one has a pretty good touchpad that is nicely paired up with a backlit keyboard and speaking of the touchpad what's going to help you differentiate between the two here is the fingerprint scanner that is located at the top right corner of the touchpad on the 2017 edition laptop 
And believe it or not, this is one of the best fingerprint scanners I have ever seen. It is literally instantaneous. As soon as you put your finger on it, it unlocks your computer, which is awesome and amazing. And I don't have to deal with passwords or pin codes anymore. I just put my finger on it and unlock it. It's just really, really good. All right, so the conclusion, what do I think about these laptops and what do I recommend? And is it worth getting the newer model over the old one? Well, as you guys have saw, the performance difference is there. And especially when it comes to games, that's where you're really going to notice the difference. You can play games on both of them. You can do work on both of them. They both have amazing displays and super awesome Dolby audio. And yes, they do have some really loud bassy speakers and they sound great. And overall, they're pretty awesome laptops. They have all the features. And simply the only difference between these two is the fingerprint scanner, faster CPU, GPU, and SSD. And that is it. Both of these are the exact same, except one is just really fast. So is it worth it to you to get the newer one? I say if you're gonna be playing games and this is gonna be your main laptop, I totally recommend it. But you gotta keep in mind right now, it does throttle, so don't expect to have really long gaming sessions since this thing will get hot. But that said, after a long day's work or if you're at school and just taking a quick break and you wanna get a quick game in, like Rock League or whatever, you can definitely launch a game and just start playing for an hour or so and uh, just have a great experience. But yeah guys, that's actually pretty much it for this video. So to sum it all up, you're actually getting a pretty amazing package pack into an Ultrabook body. You gotta keep in mind, this is an Ultrabook, not a laptop, so it makes all the difference when it comes to portability, and especially for work or school. This is a fantastic machine to take with you, especially when it comes to gaming and work. It's a fantastic machine, and either way, you're gonna be getting some great performance, but I still totally recommend getting the 2017 edition laptop for that sweet extra performance, especially when it comes to gaming, that's where you're gonna really notice it. If you're not gaming and you don't really need that extra performance, then the 2016 edition will do you just fine. But if you really want faster storage speeds, then go ahead and get the 2017 edition. So yes, the 2017 edition laptop is worth its money. And that is actually pretty much it for this video. So hopefully I've answered all your questions and helped you decide on which one is better for you. And with that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.